Excellent. What's up guys, welcome to my monthly builds video for December 2016. Every month I do a three part series. There is a planning phase where I part out a couple builds for you guys and talk about the decision making process that goes into that. Second part is where I actually build the system. I just actually finished doing this system build for November, so check out that video if you haven't seen it already. And then the third part is the testing phase where I test the system out, run some benchmarks, talk about my experiences with the parts that went into it, what I liked and what I didn't like. So if you haven't already seen it, again, the monthly builds video for last month, uh, the actual build part just went up, Mini ITX Monster PC, and then I have the follow-up for that, which should be up, uh, I believe, on Wednesday. That's my plan. Uh, and then I also, of course, have these videos, the monthly builds. I used to do this live. I don't anymore. Um, but I think I'm actually going to combine these two playlists to make everything fit together a little bit better. Now, uh, I do ask you guys every month for what you want to see in the PC builds for the following month. So for December, you all voted for the $1,000 build for a sane person, balance over blank. Like, what would I really spend if I was, or what would I really buy if I was building a $1,000 computer? But now that I've explained how things usually work, this video is actually going to be a little bit different than my typical monthly builds videos. For one, I only have a single build for you guys today, although it is a very good one. And for two, I'm looking for some additional feedback for you guys for what to plan out for next year. Because although there's a pretty good chance I might not actually build the system for this month, mainly due to some upcoming stuff at the very end of December and the beginning of January that I can't really talk about yet, uh, I will be getting some additional feedback from you guys as far as these questions here. Looking back at my past year and the builds that I've done, I realized that I was kind of limited in the various case manufacturers I worked with, so I have this question, which underrepresented, at least on my channel, case manufacturer, would you like to see in a future build video? And I have a bunch of uh, high quality case manufacturers here that I've worked with before. Just uh, vote, let me know what you think uh, as far as who you'd like to see me work with in the future. Uh, also, in early 2017, there are some rumored product launches. I want to know what you guys are most excited about, whether it's AMD's Zen CPUs, AMD Radeon Vega GPUs, Intel's KB Lake stuff, or whatever NVIDIA has going on, because they haven't teased too much as of yet. And finally, um, just as in general for my parts list videos, what do you guys think should be included with a typical parts list? Uh, just the core PC components? the core PC components and the operating system, which is how I've done it today, or the PC hardware, the operating system, and peripherals such as mouse, keyboard, and monitor. So vote on those, all the links are down in the description, and let's move on to my build for this month, the $1,000 build, which I think is a great price to go for. I think if you're building a PC for the first time and you don't have anything else to work with and you're buying all the parts, 500 bucks I think is kind of the minimum you should shoot for. Seven to eight hundred dollars you can get a good system. For a thousand dollars you can get some nice performance, overclocking capability, better cooling, and just a better experience overall. So this system uh, is of course featuring the i5-6600K, which is kind of what you would go for as far as a CPU at this price. Uh, at the, for a system at this price. I'm looking forward to there being some other options besides the 6600K. I have an Intermax cooler, an ASUS motherboard. Uh, I use some parametric filters for the memory and storage, uh, an R9 Fury graphics card, a deep cool case, and a Corsair power supply. I've also included $30 uh, Kingwin Windows 10 uh, license. And bring it all to just shy of $1,000, $998. Total. So let's go over these parts. Again, that's 6600K, 220 bucks right now. There were some good deals for this on Black Friday, but about 220 is what you would spend for it. Solid overclockable processor, quad core, no hyper threading. Um, yeah, there's there's not much competition at this price. So get a 6600K and look forward to next year when we will hopefully have some Zen and KB Lake stuff coming in to provide some competition there. Uh, you do need a cooler for that unlocked processor. It doesn't come with one out of the box. I chose the Intermax ETS T40F. It's about 40 bucks. Uh, you can get some other options for about $10 cheaper than this, like the uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo uh, or the Cryo Rig H7. I do think this one looks pretty nice, though. It's got an all-black finish. Uh, it does have a blue LED fan, which you may or may not like. Direct copper uh, heat pipe contact for the CPU, uh, and a good cooler overall. It's got some pretty good ratings. It's slightly smaller than the old version of that. But uh, for the motherboard, I have an ASUS Z170E ATX. Price for this is right around 100 15 to 120 dollars and there are some mail-in rebates available right now uh, This motherboard gets the job done and has all the features that I would want in a full-size ATX motherboard uh, Here's the new egg page which man new eggs photos have gone downhill in some <laughs> Circumstances usually they used to take photos of everything and it would be nice and big and you can see all the details But this is just a blown up not blown up picture of the 
manufactured photo. Anyway, I'm complaining. Uh, $25 million rebate card will bring this down to $111, and it has SLI support uh, for two-way SLI at least. It's got an M.2 slot in there. It's got an all-black uh, color scheme with just a little bit of white accents on there, and even the tiniest little bit of blue, which I suppose would match with that. Uh, with that heatsink fan from Enermax. I wasn't really going for matchy-matchy with this build, but um, for $1,000, you, you can make some selections that will be uh, both powerful as well as aesthetically pleasing. Now, I used some parametric filters uh, on PC Part Picker. Uh, did I mention, by the way, PC Part Picker is what I'm using to part out all these systems? Parametric filters is how you can do basically a search, and then you can tell in your build uh, PC Part Picker to say, just do that search and use the best uh, component from within that search. So um, just to show you guys how I might choose memory, uh, using the parametric filter, all I really did was choose the basic DDR for memory speeds that uh, would be reasonably priced, 2133 all, all the way up to 3000. I want a 16 gig kit, that's two by eight gigs. And then I want something that's uh, as cheap as possible. So if you if you sort these by price, the one it's gonna give you right now is this Gil, Gil Evo Potenza. Uh, for $73. So you'll notice there's a lot of options in the $73 to maybe $83 range down here. And I would just go down these one at a time and click on each one and see what it looks like. And if it matches, this one is red and probably doesn't match very well. So after going down most of these and finding that most of them are colors that don't match at all, I found the Mushkin black line. So that's probably what I would go with here. It's a DDR4 2400 and it's $83. Or, um, if you don't care about things matching, then just get the, the Gil Evo Potenza, Gil, Gil Evo Potenza, or perhaps even something in here like, you know, that Rift House 5 series is DDR4-3000. Just, you know, a hair or two faster, so that might be worth going for too. But that's kind of how I would decide which memory I want. Uh, for storage, I did the same thing. Uh, again, remember to sort by price here. Uh, for an SSD, I wanted a 240 gig, 2.5 inch drive, uh, Radeon R3 series from AMD right now is 60 bucks. Uh, the 8 Premier SP550 is also right there in that, right down there in that range. But right around this 60 to 70 dollar uh, range, there's quite a few options for 240 gig SSDs. That's what I would use for my operating system. And then I would add a two terabyte uh, mechanical drive to that. Uh, these can be found for a very reasonably priced, less than 50 dollars. Uh, gives you a bunch more storage, so you don't have to worry about running out of space on that SSD. And I wanted a 7200 RPM two terabyte drive that was a 3.5 inch uh, size. And this is pretty much what I came up with. So um, yeah, go for that Hitachi DeskStar 7K2000. Get yourself some additional storage. All right, let's move on to the memory card. I'm sorry, the graphics card. I chose the R9 Fury, four gig. This is the Nitro version from Sapphire. Available over on Newegg right now for $260. Uh, $240 if you count the $20 mail-in rebate card. And it looks like Newegg has, oh good, they have slightly better pictures for this one. So this is a three uh, fan cooler design from Sapphire. It's their Nitro version. And for $260, this is just an insane bang for the buck. This will pretty much run circles around uh, like a four, an RX 488 gig uh, or like a GTX 1060. Uh, so yeah, I think it's a better option for here. If you do have a little bit more money to spend and you want to give yourself a nice jump up from this in performance, I would consider, consider a GTX 1070 as long as you can find one in the $380 to $400 range. That would be a nice option too. Moving back to the case, uh, the deep cool Ducase, Ducasse? Ducas V2 ATX mid tower case 50 bucks for this case and it hits all of the uh, selling points that I want first off it has good reviews so um, although I haven't worked with this one personally oh great we're back to the tiny new egg photos these aren't going to help us very much but let's see what we can do um, anyway it's got a nice clear acrylic side panel so you can see into your build it's got a, a basement down here that's covered up for your power supply uh, which is also kind of nice to have. Even as a couple five and a quarter inch bays, even a 3.5 inch external bay, if you want to add uh, some, you know, an optical drive or like a card reader or something like that. Uh, pretty nice design. Looks pretty clean. Uh, got good I.O. At, up, up front, uh, USB 3 and USB 2 and, and all that good stuff. Painted interior, um, some SSD trays down there, and then, uh, you know, full size ATX layout and all that good stuff. So uh, a solid case from Deepcool for $50, and I think this would be a nice foundation for anyone to build a system in, uh, at least until you got tired of it and, and you know upgrade to a $100, $150 case some da sometime down the line, because that is nice to do at some point. But I think that's a good case uh, for 50 bucks. Finally, the power supply here, um, well, not almost finally, but uh, close to finally, the Corsair RM650X. This is a very solid 80 plus gold power supply. 
Um, this will last you for multiple system builds, I would imagine, um, as long as there's not some crazy feature in PCs that's coming out soon that I'm not aware of. But uh, all black cabling, which is nice, that 80 plus gold, uh, very reputable manufacturer in Corsair. And this one, again, is on sale right now for $70. Uh, even $10 more off with a promo. It looks like there's a promo code and a mill and rebate from Newegg. Wow, you can get this for, seriously. Oh no, that's including the $20 mill and rebate card and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, if this is too much for you, if you're looking for some other options for power supplies, uh, Corsair, EVGA, um, who, who else makes power supplies? There's other power supply manufacturers as well, but they have some good options down in the $50 to $70 range. And again, you want 80 plus gold. I would look for 600 watts uh, for this kind of, um, uh, build and then I always like to check the cabling um, and make sure that it, it's pretty if possible um, And then lastly now of course you need an operating system for this build so Windows 10 professional uh, available from kingwin.net for $28.09 right now um, People often ask me since I did my Windows 10 for $20 video if Kingwin is still working for me all the systems that I've gotten Windows 10 licenses for uh, through Kingwin are still working just fine so uh, yeah, it's been good for me. But guys, that is going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of this $1,000 build in the comment section. Uh, don't forget those links to the straw polls so you can vote on the other stuff uh, that I have coming up. Uh, this video follow-up will be coming out just on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that as well. I did a bunch of testing. Very nice little system here. I'm very happy with it so far, and uh, I like that it's portable so I can take it to CES in January. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.